Aha! Yes, viewers, Cars on Television and Film is back. And today we're looking at the cars of Alan Partridge. Alan Partridge has been a staple of British popular culture for about 30 years. He was created during uh, actor Steve Coogan's student days. I think he used to uh, play a similar character on a BBC College radio station. But in 1991, there was a show on uh, Radio 4 called On The Hour, where um, Armando Iannucci, who is a, you know, a very well-known personality as well in this country and Steve Coogan put together uh, a cast of characters for the, the fake news show and Alan Partridge which was originally a sports presenter. I would sort of think of Alan Partridge of those who've never seen anything with him in it before as a cross between um, sort of Tony Wilson from 24 Hour Party People and you know Steve Coogan played Tony Wilson in that film so familiar with him and I think Tony Wilson had a had a cameo in it too um and Richard Maidley who again he's someone who shouldn't really be on television in my opinion because he just puts his foot in it so much and it's, it's such a nightmare to watch him but you know there we go that's what we've ended up with and you know Alan Partridge has appeared in so many different things over the years in 1992 he uh, introduced a show called uh, Knowing Me, Knowing You which on Radio 4, which then later went to BBC Two. Uh, so the radio show was in 92, the sh uh, show television was in 1994. Um, it didn't go well for Alan Partridge in that because I, I think he accidentally shot a guest or something as far as I remember the end of that series. And then in 1995, there was Knowing Me, Knowing You All, where Alan Partridge, at the end of the... Um, fake chat show uh, attacks a commissioning editor of the BBC because he isn't going to get a second series of Knowing Me, Knowing You. The next we see of him was in 1997 with uh, I'm Alan Partridge where he's um, now working in, on a local radio station in Norfolk and he's staying in, I think it's called Linton's Inn, which is supposedly halfway between um, London and Norwich. It's actually, it was actually filmed on the A41 Watford Bypass. I've actually stayed in that hotel myself, um, funnily enough, when it was called the Ramada Inn, which had been about, I don't know, 2008, 2009. Um, it's called something else now, but it's not actually in, uh, in, in that area in East Anglia. It's near Watford. Um, and um, things, again, don't necessarily go very well for Alan Partridge, um, his kind of tastes in everything, you know, his uh, obsession with um, Roger Moore, James Bond films, uh, with uh, Return of the Saints, with all that kind of stuff, uh, they don't necessarily put him in good stead. In 2002, a second series of Iron Man and Partridge was made um, with a different car. We will be talking about the cars in a moment. We'll just do a bit of background for people who never heard of Alan Partridge. If you are a fan of Alan Partridge, that will be frustrating. But, uh, you know, there we go. Um, in 2010, Mid Morning Matters with Tim Key, which is a series of YouTube shorts originally, um, and then ended up um, on Sky Atlantic. Tim Key has been a key figure in... Um, a key figure. Uh, he's been a, an important figure in um, Steve Coogan's Alan Partridge work for quite a number of years now. In 2012, another uh, fake documentary appeared. It was on Sky Atlantic this time. Um, Alan Partridge, Welcome to Places of My Life. It will be covered in cars of that. Uh, in 2013, the first feature film starring Steve Coogan and Alan Partridge appeared. Uh, Alan Partridge, Alpha Papa. I've not seen a lot of these things, actually. I've not seen Places of My Life. I've not seen Alpha Papa. I've not seen Scissor Dial, but I will be covering the cars of them because for the sake of completeness, um, we're only doing Alan Partridge really because of the viewer request, actually. Um, it's not something I was thinking of doing, but when I'm sitting in a uh, light-coloured KB6 engine Rover, just like you know, Alan Partridge sat in a light-coloured KB6 engine Rover in I'm Alan Partridge, then it sort of makes sense, doesn't it, really? So... Uh, 
2016, um, I purchased Scissor Dial, again on Sky Atlantic, and then 2019, which is the last one we'll talk about, was this time with Alan Partridge, and I have actually watched that, and my wife made me sit through it, because somehow she can take um, massive doses of embarrassment far more than I can. So let's look at the initial appearance of Alan Partridge on television and the cars that were in that. It's 1994, Knowing Me, Knowing You. We're not going to talk about all the cars used in all these different series and film. We're just going to really talk about the main ones that you know about. I do have my secret mission documents here, my dossier on the cars of Alan Partridge. So I'll be referring to it so I don't uh, you know, run into too many problems. But um, the famous incident of Alan Partridge driving a Rover 800 is actually, it's not quite as it seems. So uh, it's a 1994 Rover 820 SI, uh, which, you know, he says it's a Vitesse. It's, it's not. The Vitesse badge is actually in the wrong place. So you, you might have seen an image of it that I've shown you. Um, it's actually an 820 SI. It was, I think, supplied by the Rover Group at the time. Um, it's M446 JRW. That sounds like a press plate to me. But not the perhaps um, best publicity for Rover at the time. And um, then we look at I'm Alan Partridge, which is a, I think in these days probably a, a better known show than Knowing Me Knowing You. I don't I don't know, possibly. Um, it did run for a bit longer and there are more cars to talk about. So uh, first of all, we have the famous 1996 Rover 825 Sterling with the KV6 engine, uh, P907 JVP. This car I think was supplied by Rover Group themselves. It's very similar actually in terms of the plate to a car that was used in Midsummer Murders. So probably from the Rover press fleet, although the paint that they put on it, which you would have seen in the images, uh, would have been, uh, I think, probably water-based paint to remove. Cook past Babtridge, of course. Um, the initial words on there I will not mention. He has to, uh, though, save some money on his pear tree production um, company. Um, he's told by Lynn his long-suffering secretary, but he has to downgrade to um, uh, a Rover 100, really, at the time. But he, she says it's a Metro. I've got a Metro brochure for you. I think it's probably the fact that the Metro doesn't sound as good. Uh, sorry, sorry, the Metro sounds better than saying we need to get the Rover 100. They, they were still in production at the time, but it just sounds better. And, of course, uh, uh, Alan says, Lynn, I'm not driving a Mini Metro. Um, which of course he isn't. So he instead somehow he um, manages to save a bit of money on production company and he can have a Rover 214. It's a 1997 Rover 216, sorry, F214 SI. I've actually driven one of those on the channel. I drove a, um, an, an earlier example that didn't have much equipment because they the trend changes between model years and this one's um, uh, the same colour as the automatic 216 I drove just about a couple of weeks ago, actually. Um, that's interesting, isn't it? So uh, this this one, uh, P543 PEX. Both of these are the original plates of the cars, by the way. They're not fake plates. This is not a car that's supplied by Rover Group. It's a Norwich plate on this car. Um, I think the uh, MOT expired about 2010, so it's, it's, it's gone now. Um, but... Um, Funny that actually Rover Group didn't supply both the cars for the series. They only supplied the Sterling that only appears in the first two episodes and then um, this one appears in the other episodes of the first series. Uh, second series, he has a 2001 Lexus IS300. It's not an IS200, it's an IS300, which I think was supplied by Lexus or Toyota UK. Uh, GE51YXJ, uh, classic Toyota stroke Lexus press plate on that. And, of course, that's the car where he decides that he's going to um, sort of air drum to the return of the same theme tune. 
I have seen actually, you know, Gulvi in a clip where he does the same in, a, in, in an XJS. I think it's the XJS he's been series or one of them because there were several. Um, he does a bit of Alan Partridge air drumming in the um, XJS. That's quite funny as well. Let's now go forward to um, Alan Partridge, Welcome to the Places of My Life from 2012, and also to look at um, Alan Partridge, Alpha Papa from 2013. Now, the main car I think that Alan Partridge drives in Welcome to the Places of My Life is a 2010 Vauxhall Insignia. Uh, it's LT10 EAK. It's a a uh, two litre turbo SRI and it's a saloon, which is quite unusual for one of those. Most of them were hatchbacks. It does fit um, Alpha, uh, sort of Alan Partridge's character quite well. It's sort of the kind of car that you see everywhere and dri driven by kind of, you know, some sort of middle of the road type people. And to be honest, Alan Partridge is, is about as middle of the road as it gets. That's, that's it's him all over, really. Um, the strange thing about this particular car, I don't know if Vauxhall supplied this car themselves or not. It might have been that. I think that's a Luton plate actually on that. Um, possibly not. I don't know. Is that the Vauxhall badge, which is notorious for being stolen off the Mark 1 insignias like this one, is not there. It's been replaced by a later type Vauxhall badge. That's really an earlier type Vauxhall badge. A smaller, earlier Voxel type badge, which I suppose is an in joke by some of the people. By about 2012, that was probably fairly common to um, to happen. He also drives. Uh, there's no plate you can see visible in this. A 2010 Road Rover Sport HSE, and uh, he looks like he's having some some fun with that. Unfortunately, I haven't I haven't seen Welcome to Places of My Life. I really should watch that if I can actually understand it and not cringe. Um, but uh, yes, maybe at some point we'll have a look at that. Then in the uh, 2013 film, Alan Partridge, Alpha Papa, again, very, very good example of uh, an appropriate car to choose. The film, I think, is supposed to take place in Norfolk, but a lot of it was filmed in South West London, places like Wimbledon and Merton and Mitchum and places like that. The, the studio, I think, that the bill used to occupy until 2010 was used um, for this particular production as well, which is, explains that. Um, dear Alan Partridge finds himself as a um, a hostage negotiator at the radio station where he works. I think that's essentially what happens in it. So it, the car that he has, and it, you know, it um, <laughs> says on the side of it, supplied by um, Fendel Motors. I think it's a fictional dealership. I don't think that actually exists. The car, I think, probably was supplied by Kia uh, UK. They uh, had a head office in, I think it's Watton on Thames, actually, which isn't massively far away from. Uh, you know, Merton, where the, where the studios are. And uh, it's a base model diesel Optima. A base model diesel Optima, which is the one trim. Um, so 1.7 CRDI 1. Uh, LB61 PAO. There's nothing particularly exciting about it. I know Optima is a decent car, but if, of course... That's the forbidden fuel, and of course we can't talk about that on the channel. But I think we're going to have another problem with that because that's be coming up a bit later on as well. The car that um, Lynn drives, I think actually Lynn who drives this, is a 1985 Austin Metro L. That's still around apparently. I think it's um, had it had an MOT or something, or went for an MOT in 2020, so it's still around. It's a bit frilly on on the bottom valance, which is what Metro always used to do, isn't it? Uh, it's B two six six C E A. Uh, sorry, S E A C. That's why I got confused. Um, yeah, a little beige metro, probably the thing that Alan Partridge hates most in his life. Let's finish off the uh, cars of Alan Partridge by looking at. Um, Alan Partridge's Citadel from 2016 and this time of Alan Partridge from 2019. In Citadel, he starts off, I think, um, well, again, I haven't seen um, Places of My Life. 
uh, Alpha Papa or Citadel. I've not seen any of those, but from what I can understand, he starts off in a Hyundai i30, and the i30 at the time was a pretty new, um, pretty new car for just by the one that he drives. He drives a 2013 model, which is the first year of production form. I don't think it's a press car or anything. It's maybe meant to be a higher car. I don't. I don't really know. He doesn't, doesn't use it very much. Um, but it's a 2013 i30. 1.6 CRDI Active Automatic. Um, I think that's OV13 DXW. I don't think um, Q, uh, sorry, Hyundai would have um, supplied that actually themselves. It's not a press plate or anything as far as I know. Uh, maybe they just hired it locally. I'm not really sure. The main car though that he has is, is interesting. It's a very, very late Land Rover Defender. It's the last year of production. They finished production in January 2016. Uh, this is a 15 plate, so it registered somewhere between March and September um, 2015, which would make sense for the 2016 date of the um, uh, fake documentary. So it's a Defender 90 2.2 T TD uh, XS OY15 TZP. I think that is the official plate on it, and that's a very common registration for Land Rover and Jaguar fleet vehicles, either they're to be a V or, or an O. This time of Alan Partridge, uh, he got another insignia, which probably, you, you know, is getting an appropriate car for him. Unfortunately, the insignia that he drives has a fake plate on it. It looks like it possibly might be uh, a real Vauxhall uh, fleet plate, but it's not. Uh, it's a fake plate. I remember checking that myself. Uh, back in 2019 when I first watched this and my lady wife had to make me sit for it because I just got too embarrassed watching him which is you know one of the things that happens but it, according to what people just you know research they've done um, the Vauxhall insignia is a Grand Sport 1.6 Ecotec D design uh, which allegedly has wheels on it that aren't real alloys they are um, hubcaps that look like alloys which is a bit of a well not very, not very good. I think is um, what I would say. I do like the uh, Mark II Insignia, the Grand Sport. I do like it's a nice car, um, but you do need one of the alloy wheels. And being powered by for the forbidden fuel doesn't particularly help. But I suppose it's appropriate for a character. Oh, that was embarrassing watching that. Uh, it's just him being not just em embarrassing and incompetent, but sort of slightly older, embarrassing and incompetent, which. Hmm. Hey, that's what people like to watch. So there we go. By special request, the cars of Alan Partridge. Um, I suppose if there are more series that he's in and, you know, more films, we'll have to talk about those as well. Steve Coogan, of course, is a huge petrol head. He appeared, I believe, on the very first series of the Revamp Top Gear in 2002. He, I think it's a massive Volvo um, fanatic because in the Parole Officer, which is a film that most people have forgotten about, I think it was made in 2001, uh, he drives an old 240 estate. He also identified lots of bits from a Volvo 144, which uh, they had in the studio on the first series of the Relaunch Top Gear, I think when he had a guest appearance. He also came along um, for other, other things as well in, um, in Top Gear, but not as Alan Partridge. Um, Yes, you know, I, I I look forward to seeing, you know, what else Steve Coogan's got for us. He seems to be quite a serious actor these days and doing any kind of big budget productions, but I have an inkling that he really likes playing on a partridge and he's done it for over 30 years, so, you know, why not? Anyway, uh, that's enough for this episode of Cars on Television and Film. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Click the notification bell to be informed of new uploads. Uh, social media links are in the description below. Please uh, like this video and leave a comment below as well. That would be wonderful. And thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching.